Okay, hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about application segmentation, or otherwise known as micro-segmentation, or just flat-out segmentation. Um, I'm sure next week the industry will have a new phrase or a new acronym that we'll have to learn, but now I think those are the top three that we're going to focus on. Um, I'm going to let everyone here today in on a little secret which may come as a shock to you. Applications are the heart of our business. Without our applications, our business does not make money. That means you and I don't get paid. Regardless whether you are a network architect or a security architect, your SecOps or your NetOps, um, our job collectively as a team is to provide reachability, usability, and security to the heart of our business. But these applications are really, really hard to secure. They're really hard to understand. They're really hard to maintain. And there are several reasons why we've struggled with segmentation, why we've struggled to maintain these and, and, and uh, understand what these applications are doing. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Um, almost every customer that I come across is looking into or actively working on some type of segmentation project. And most of the customers are in a phase of trying to figure out how different environments interact. Um, why are they communicating? Should they communicate? Do we want to continue to allow that communication? Is that behavior or that communication between those resources normal? And if not, how do we prevent that going forward? But most customers stay in this phase for quite some time because this is a really huge challenge for these reasons that we're going to cover. The new reality of our world is that applications of today are really a hybrid mix. They're a mix of different virtual machines, bare metal servers. They run on both uh, on-prem resources, whether that's Cisco UCS or, or Dell or... or um, you know, IBM, uh, those resources, again, whether they're virtual machines, bare metal run in various different cloud resources. You think about microservices like containers. So now you have a virtual machine running on top of a hosted bare metal server that inside of that virtual machine is running a container. Wow. Right. And we try to deploy secure methodologies that realistically cannot keep up with the rapid change of these applications. And each application is entirely unique. So not only do we try to put in a security method, a security protocol, where we can have a simple code upgrade or a patch upgrade, or somebody could just simply change a line of code that now changes this, the, the behavior of that workload, that workload, that server, that application resource was entirely unique to begin with. The deployment, the use of that application is always going to vary based on user, based on department, based on customer. Application visibility, application security, and segmentation is a journey. But despite all of these challenges, that doesn't mean that this journey has to be an overly complicated one. Tetration was built to solve this problem. Tetration was built to solve an extremely complex problem in a complex world in a simple way. And if you really think about it, that is not an easy task. For starters, to our shock and surprise, we realized that not every customer is going to be running Cisco hardware. You're not always going to run Cisco switches, routers, and firewalls. There are occasions where customers make a not-so-wise decision and run another vendor's hardware, right? So we needed to figure out a way for you to solve your problems, for you to achieve your goals when you're not running Cisco hardware. Not every customer is going to run a single cloud provider. You're not just going to go with AWS or Google Cloud. You're going to run both. You're going to have Azure or Azure, however you want to you want to pronounce it. You're not going to have a single hypervisor. You may be running primarily VMware, but you know what? You're going to have a Windows development team or you're going to have Windows admins that say, well, you know what? Rather than going to the VMware compute team every time we need a virtual server, why don't we just light up Hyper-V on some of the Windows VMs we have and we'll run virtualization on top of virtualization. So how, again, can we solve these problems and yet give you, the customer, the ability to achieve your goals across multiple hypervisors, multiple uh, different kinds of physical network infrastructure, multiple cloud providers? It really is a complex environment that we live in. So what we decided was with Tetration, we are going to develop a platform where security now lives within the application itself, um, not with the infrastructure. Ultimately, this brings security closer to the application, as close to the endpoint as, as humanly possible. 
This allows the policy to actually follow the application across a data center, across a private or public cloud platform. When you vMotion a, a virtual machine from one data center to another, we want our application policy to follow that application wherever it goes. If you lift and ship that application from your on-prem, um, you know, your private cloud up to the public cloud in AWS, we want our application policy to follow it. So as apps change over their life cycle, we can have security controls that change as well. So we built this policy management capability into the platform that allows continuous automated security. Think about when you have an application and you've added database servers to uh, a cluster. You don't want to constantly have to go and recreate access lists and, and try to figure out how you're going to deploy security on that new database server. You want something automated to say, okay, this database server belongs to this application. I'm going to go ahead and push these already existing security policies that have locked down this application to that new database server. And since each application is built differently and comprised of different building blocks, security needs to understand how and what the application is comprised of to adapt and react to any changes. But again, we want to try to automate that as much as possible. So all of this flexibility and complexity is built into this platform while keeping things as simple as possible for us not so smart human beings to be able to understand. Tetration is going to build upon a very, very simple five-step process. The very first thing that we want to do is discover your workload. Your application is going to be made up of many different what we call workloads. Those are servers. They could be bare metal. They could be VM. They could be EC2 instances living in AWS. But your application is made up of all these different workloads doing different jobs. You have web servers, database servers. You have shared resources like Active Directory, DNS, IPAM identity services and so we want to understand what these servers are doing but we don't just want to understand source destination protocol right I can get that from Wireshark for free I could turn on NetFlow on a router and I can get that for free there's no sense in me paying for something that's going to give me source destination protocol Tetration wants to understand the why behind what we're seeing Tetration wants to understand what software is running on this server that is requiring port 443 to be open. Is that Apache? Is that IIS? Or is that some other software that could be malicious running on this server listening to 443 traffic? Once we discover everything that these individual workloads are doing, individual servers are doing, we're going to start mapping out how this application works as a whole. So we're going to start putting together how do these web servers interact with the database servers? How do these database servers interact with the Active Directory servers? And so we're going to map out that dependency. And while we map out those internal dependencies of that application, we're going to go ahead and automatically generate a policy because let's face it, we now understand what each workload is doing. We're now mapping out the behavior of the application. We might as well just give you the security policy while we're at it. But now we talk about step three. And I want you to imagine how many times you've done application changes under the cloud of darkness. Why? Why do you do them on, on Friday night at 11 o'clock? Well, because we realize that things are most likely not going to work. And so we need rollback time. But imagine if you could take all the policies that you've generated and you could somehow test them on real traffic. Tetration built in, and we're going to look at this a little bit later on in our workshop, Tetration built in has the ability to analyze your live policy. So if I generate a policy, uh, let's say I generated it back in January, the first week of January I generated a policy, I could put Tetration into live analysis mode all the way up until today. And I could say, match my live traffic that you're seeing against my policy that was generated four months ago, six months ago, eight months ago. Analyze it and show me what you would block and why you would block it. Show me what you would allow and why you would allow it. So when it comes time for deployment, I know exactly what I'm going to block and why I'm going to block it. I know exactly what's not going to work. And I have a chance, an opportunity based on live traffic to go back and fix that policy. And then within Tetration, I can enforce those policies. I don't have to export them to some firewall. I don't have to move them from one product to another. I don't have to take them from whatever discovered it and push it into some enforcement mechanism. Tetration is literally walking me through this process. So I go to one, two, three, and now there is literally a green button that says enforce 
policies. And now I can go ahead and I can achieve that segmentation. But what is segmentation without compliance monitoring? If I have created a policy that said dev cannot talk to prod, or I've created a policy that says anything that is HIPAA cannot talk to development, right? Or anything that contains P2 data, PII, is not allowed to talk to separate environments, right? If I've gone ahead and created those policies, I don't just want this product to block the traffic. I want it to actually alert me when things try to behave or try to access one another outside of the policy that I've created. And this does a number of different things for me. This allows me to reduce my attack surface. This allows me to confine an attacker to a, a localized environment if they are able to gain access to an app. This allows me to not stay in that application discovery mode for years. That allows me to achieve faster time to value where I'm actually achieving application segmentation much, much faster. This reduces the management within my security, uh, security platform because now I can manage all of this from one product, right? Again, I'm not doing discovery in one thing and moving it into another thing and then and then monitoring it with another thing I'm doing all of this in one platform right and this allows my segmentation project not to last years so in summary what does security with titration look like well first we contain the lateral movement within the data center with segmentation or micro segmentation titration can achieve multiple levels of segmentation extremely easily second we identify workload behavioral anomalies and we do this proactively. Why? Because titration is actually learning the local behavior of each individual virtual machine, bare metal server, uh, container. Titration is actually learning the behavior. When you think about what an attacker is going to do in your environment, they're going to try to gain network access first. Once they're on your network, they're going to look for data that they can steal. They're going to try to attack a server based on a known vulnerability, and they're going to, once they find a way into that server, they're now going to try and install some malicious software, or they're going to start running scripts, or they're going to start looking for data they can take. They may start running different jobs. They may disable software, install software. Tetration will proactively look at the behavior of that server, and if that behavior changes, Tetration knows instantly, meaning if I log into a server and start running tons of PowerShell commands looking for data or start turning off services or enabling new services, Tetration is going to know that in near real time and be able to automate whatever um, whatever protection mechanism we want to uh, activate, whether that's just quarantining the server, whether that's adjusting a policy so that server no longer has access to the internet, it, whatever it is, Tetration can do that piece. Which leads us to the next piece. Tetration is going to look for all of the software vulnerabilities within each workload and within each application. So when I have an application database server or web server that is vulnerable to an attack, Tetration is going to let me know that. And I'm going to be able to actually create a dynamic policy around that vulnerability. Let me give you an example. If I see a critical CVE in my environment, or if I see a specific known malicious software like Apache Struts, for example, or I shouldn't say malicious software, um, if I see a vulnerability in software like Apache Struts, I can create a policy and say, look, if you see a server that has Apache struts or a known malicious software or a known CVE, prevent it access from the internet. Or don't allow that server or group of servers or application, don't allow it access to my core database server or shared database server or P2 environment. I can do that, create that one dynamic rule, Tetration will take care of the rest for me. So again, one rule for me, that could be 5,000 rules for Tetration, but I don't care. I'm a human being. I don't want to manage 5,000 rules. I want to manage one. The last thing that we're going to do is the policy compliance. We're going to proactively know when an application component deviates from the policy that we've integrated. Tetration will not allow the deviation. It will block it. But I still want to know that that's occurring. I want to know when things are deviating. I don't want to know after the fact. I don't want to know after I'm trying to have to, uh, you know, figure out what was compromised and what was taken. And by the way, you can do this anywhere. On any compute resource, on any hypervisor, on any container. You can do this in any cloud, private or public, across any provider. So all of the different things that we've just given you a brief overview for in the last 15 minutes, you can achieve any container, 
any any cloud provider on prem in the cloud doesn't matter bare metal server doesn't matter cisco infrastructure doesn't matter what you run we can have this capability now across our entire environment and as we go through and work through the next few labs as we work through the next couple of sections we'll be able to show you that so hope you stay tuned to talk to you soon bye bye